Yo, what's up everyone? It's your boy Dark King here and welcome to our second gauntlet guide. Today we'll be looking at the lightning gauntlet. The lightning gauntlet is rather interesting as it can be mid-range, close range, or a long range weapon. The basic lightning spell works as follows. It shoots out three lightning bolts. The first one does a base damage, the second one does double damage, and if you hit the third one, it does less damage. These lightning bolt damages are not fixed. If you miss one and then hit the next two, the second hit will still do 28 damage. The damage is based on how many lightning bolts you have hit, not which lightning bolt you hit your enemy with. As stated before, the lightning fuck. As stated before, the lightning gauntlet can be very good at close range as you can spam it and hit people for a lot of damage. However, it can also be used at mid ranges, such as from here and even long ranges if you have height on someone. You can just stay in the air and hit him. The lightning gauntlet as you can see does a lot of burst damage so it can be very good to hit a player that is still looting or is unaware of your presence. Now let's go over the lightning gauntlet sorcery. What the lightning gauntlet sorcery does is spawn a big circle in which lightning bolts can appear at random. Because of this randomness it's usually good to try and catch people in the center of it so if they try and move around they'll still be hit by the lightning bolts. As you can see, there's a decent startup time on the Lightning Gauntlet Sorcery, so it's best to hit people that are not expecting that you're going to fire it. If you do it right on someone, they can see it on the ground and jump out of the way. Another aspect of the Lightning Gauntlet Sorcery is that players that are hit by these lightning bolts can become shocked. When shocked, they can't use spells or sorceries. However, this attribute is kind of inconsistent, and they wouldn't rely on it mid-fight. Because the best way to hit people with this sorcery is when they're not expecting it. Just like the lightning gauntlet spell, it's great to hit people with it while they're looting or if they're just standing still trying to ambush you because they hurt you. It can also be great for pushing people out of buildings, especially if you're in the end game circle and you're on top of the building and they're below it. You can kind of just fire it anywhere in the building and it will hit them. Now let's go over the mana cost differences on each rarity of the lightning gauntlet. The mana cost for each gauntlet is as follows. 27 for the common lightning gauntlet, 24 for the uncommon lightning gauntlet, 21 for the rare lightning gauntlet, 18 for the epic lightning gauntlet, and 15 for the legendary lightning gauntlet. As you can see, the difference in mana cost between the common lightning gauntlet and the legendary gauntlet is quite huge. Because of this, running a class like Scavenger can be very good because it gives you much rarer gauntlets than you would normally get. This mana cost difference is something to be careful of. Late game, you usually have epic and legendary gauntlets, so it's much more beneficial for you to spam your spell. However, early game, the mana cost for the lightning gauntlet is very high, so make sure not to run out of mana and get punished. Now, let's go over the difference in damages between the rarities of the lightning gauntlet. As stated before, the lightning gauntlet has an initial hit, the second hit which is double the amount, and the third hit which again does the initial damage number. I'll be giving you the first hit and the second hit, and then the total damage number if you hit all three. The common lightning gauntlet does 9 damage and then 18 damage. The uncommon lightning gauntlet does 11 damage, then 22 damage. The rare lightning gauntlet does 12 damage, then 24 damage. The epic lightning gauntlet does 13 damage, then 26 damage. And the legendary lightning gauntlet does 14 damage, then 28 damage. The total damage for these gauntlets is as follows. This is how much damage you do if you hit all three lightning bolts. 36 for the common lightning gauntlet, 44 for the uncommon lightning gauntlet, 48 for the rare lightning gauntlet, 52 for the epic lightning gauntlet, and 56 for the legendary lightning gauntlet. This is a 20 point damage difference between the legendary lightning gauntlet and the common lightning gauntlet. So again, I would suggest running the scavenger class to get an additional rare item and increase your chances of getting a better lightning gauntlet. Now that we've gone over the damage numbers and the mana cost for the lightning gauntlet, let's go over some of the interactions between the properties of this gauntlet and the other gauntlets and how to play the lightning gauntlet in combination with some of the other gauntlets. The first gauntlet combination we'll be going over is the lightning gauntlet and the wind gauntlet. These have some inter interesting interactions. The spells for the lightning gauntlet and the wind gauntlet can't really be used together because they're both just projectiles. However, the wind sorcery can be used with a lightning spell. What this does, it sends out a pulse and causes players that go through the wind tunnel to become shocked. 
The Wind Gauntlet spell and the Lightning Gauntlet Sorcery have a kind of strange interaction. When using the Lightning Gauntlet Sorcery, using the Wind Gauntlet spell through it will cause lightning fields to be left on the ground, that when players step on them, they become shocked. However, they have to be stepping on them for a decent amount of time. If they just walk over them, they won't become shocked. See, using the lightning gauntlet sorcery on an area of the ground that's already had a lightning field made from it, these lightning fields will then respawn, as you can see. One, two. Even though these gauntlet spells and sorceries don't work that well together, they can be played very well together, as when you use the lightning spell on the ground, you then gain height and can immediately use the lightning spell on anyone that's under you. And because the lightning gauntlet spell is good at hitting people from the air, it can be very useful to get height on them and then shoot them and do that over and over. Also, getting height on them can make it easier to know where to put your lightning gauntlet sorcery. The next gauntlet combination we'll be going over is the stone gauntlet and the lightning gauntlet. These really have no interaction. The stone sorcery already doesn't really interact with any other gauntlet, and using the lightning gauntlet doesn't give the stone, the big stone, any real properties. The spells can also not be used together. If you use the lightning spell on the ground where the stone spell has been used, it doesn't require, it doesn't acquire any shock properties. This is also true of the lightning gauntlet sorcery. If you use the lightning gauntlet spell through the lightning gauntlet sorcery, the ground doesn't acquire any more properties. However, when these two sorceries do collide, they, it just causes the big stone to blow up. Sometimes there will be a fire puddle left in the air, but it's very rare. I wouldn't really advise using this combo together, as they're both kind of mid-range gauntlets. Stone gauntlet can also be used in good very close range, just like the lightning gauntlet. And since their spells and sorceries don't interact in a very cool way, they seem to not ve work very well together. However, if both these gauntlets feel comfortable to you, feel free to use them together. The Lightning Gauntlet and the Flame Gauntlet is also a combination that I wouldn't advise using together. They're both kind of mid-range gauntlets, and their spells and sorceries don't really interact in a very cool way. Since their spells are both projectiles, they can't really interact. Even if you shoot the fireball and then shoot some lightning at it, it doesn't really affect the fireball at all. When using the Lightning Sorcery, shooting a fireball through it doesn't do anything. The fire sorcery is a big wall of flame, and if you shoot some lightning bolts through it, this also doesn't do anything. The lightning gauntlet sorcery and the flame gauntlet sorcery don't interact at all. If you use them right on top of each other, nothing happens. This can be good for burst damage, as these are both kind of burst damage weapons. You can go boom boom boom, then shoot a fireball, fireball, three lightning bolts. However, when you pick gauntlet combinations, you kind of want your gauntlets to do different things to cover all areas, and these gauntlets just don't really do it. But, as I said with the last gauntlet combination, if both these gauntlets feel comfortable to you, you can use them together. Being comfortable with your gauntlets and being able to hit your spells and sorceries is much more important than using gauntlets that cover all bases if you can't use them to their fullest extent. The next combination we'll go over is the lightning gauntlet and the frost gauntlet. These gauntlets do have some interactions, however they mostly come from using the lightning gauntlet on the frost gauntlet. When you shoot the frost gauntlet projectile, it leaves ice on the ground. You can then use the lightning gauntlet on this ice to give it some lightning properties and cause players to become shocked when they walk over it. This is a similar interaction that will happen when using the frost gauntlet sorcery. When you use the frost gauntlet sorcery, it creates a big wall. Usually this freezes the opponent. You can then use the lightning spell on this to because, cause them to become shocked and get off even more damage. This can be a very good close range tool and this, this is a very powerful interaction. Even when the frost melts, you can still use the lightning gauntlet to get those lightning properties on the water. However, it doesn't last very long, but it has a very big area of effect. The frost gauntlet projectile and the lightning gauntlet projectile don't have any direct interaction because they're both projectiles and the lightning sorcery doesn't have any, any interaction with the ice projectile. When firing the ice projectile through it, it doesn't cause any players to become shocked when hit by the ice projectile, nor does it make them take more damage. Running this gauntlet combination can be very good. The frost gauntlet can cover your long range, the lightning gauntlet can be better at mid and close range, 
and you can be especially devastating at close range. If you use this, freeze them, shock them, and then hit them with a the frost spell. This gauntlet combination kind of covers all bases, and if you can hit the lightning gauntlet and the frost spell and they both feel comfortable, I would advise trying out this combination. The last gauntlet combination we'll be going over is the lightning gauntlet and the toxic gauntlet. These can also go well together because the toxic gauntlet is such a good close range tool and the lightning gauntlet can be mid to long range. The toxic gauntlet spell and the lightning gauntlet spell have a similar interaction to the frost gauntlet. Because the toxic gauntlet leaves puddles, using the lightning gauntlet on these puddles will cause players to become shocked if they walk over these puddles. The toxic gauntlet sorcery and the lightning gauntlet spell have a pretty powerful interaction as well. When using the toxic cloud, using the lightning spell on it will send out a pulse, and when players get too close to this, they will become shocked. But this effect lasts for a decently long time, so a player could get hit by it twice if they weren't playing their cards correctly. When using these two gauntlet sorceries together, it can cause an insane amount of burst damage. When you use the lightning gauntlet sorcery on the, t on the toxic cloud, it causes the flame to erupt. This is the same interaction that happens when using the toxic gauntlet sorcery with the fire gauntlet spell. This sorcery combination can cause an insane amount of burst damage when used on an unsuspecting opponent. Look at how much damage. That person is dead. If they don't move in two seconds or use a blink rune to get out of there, they're so dead. This doesn't cause a shock so they can still move, but, but, look at this. If you're using the lightning gauntlet spell to track them as they're getting out of that and doing even more damage to them, it, it can be an insane way to start off a fight and make them have 50 health right from the beginning. This is a gauntlet combination that I would advise because these do cover different bases. Toxic gauntlet can cover close range, lightning gauntlet can cover mid to long range, and using their sorceries together can be a great burst damage tool. Next we will go over the amulet that goes with the lightning gauntlet. This is called the reactive amulet. This is more of a defensive amulet than an offensive one, but it can still be powerful. This amulet is more of a defensive one than an offensive one. If you take too much damage in less than 2 seconds, it'll instantly fire 2 lightning bolts at nearby your targets. The damage that these lightning bolts do is fixed and is not affected by the gauntlets you're wearing, because if you're not wearing any lightning gauntlets, this will still happen. Now let's go over the class that goes to the lightning gauntlet. This is called Conduit. The passive ability increases your sprint speed by 20%, but this effect stops when you attack or you take damage. The first scroll, Arc Flash, is a very cool ability and can be used in some very interesting ways. It leaves behind a ball of lightning that strikes nearby players. The second scroll for the Conduit class is called Charge Rune. After using your rune, it'll fire arcs of lightning towards the nearest target for damage. This damage goes up as the levels go up. However, this scroll has a 5 second cooldown, so if you're using a rune like Blink where you're spamming it a lot, you won't get an arc every time you use the rune. The last spell is Lightning Rod. This can be very good and makes the lightning sorcery much more potent, as you can drag people into close ranges and then use the lightning sorcery right on yourself and you'll gain mana and they'll take damage. Now let's go over the upgrades on each scroll. The first one we have is Lightning Rod. This goes from 15 mana you gain to 30 mana gain. Lightning Rod 3 makes you gain 45 mana every time you're struck by a lightning bolt. This basically gives you infinite mana and you can spam the spell as much as you want. Charge Rune 3 causes enemies to take 40 damage, which is a large portion of their health. Arc Flash 2 makes your lightning bolts from having a 25% chance to a 50% chance to leave behind a ball, and then Arc Flash 3 can cause your lightning bolts to have a 75% chance. The order in which I would upgrade these scrolls would be to get Arc Flash first, your lightning rod second, and then your rune charge third. Now let's look at what exactly Arc Flash does. These are the lightning balls that get left behind and this is the damage that they do. It's only 5, however it can be very powerful if you're leaving behind multiple at the same time. That damage will really rack up. This makes it so that even if you're missing your spell, you can still be doing damage to enemy players. Let's look at how much mana you gain. Instantly, as I get hit by these lightning bolts, I'm gaining mana. This mana gain can be very good for spamming your spell, which goes very well with Arc Flash, and you can be leaving behind a ton of lightning balls and doing a ton of damage. And last but not least, we have Rune Flash. As you can see, as soon as I used my rune, it just did 40 damage to him. And now, when I have height if I'm using the Featherfall rune. If you use the Blink rune, you can do a similar thing, or any rune for that matter. 
boom. Bam. That's all for the lightning gauntlet. I hope you guys did enjoy this guide, and I will see y'all in the next one.